Well, I guess that classifies them as a pseudo underdog right now. Let's take a look here, of course. 34. You're going to get the names fixed up as we are... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Unite Offseason. Something else I will say. These teams are just absolutely loving it. I mean, five Kratoses. Uh, <laughs> this is just just crushing me dude like the last three events i've done in the last two weeks has had teams with min three kratos and now we've got the whole you know five of a kind four of a kind and a joker if you will um and poor god squad has to be on the back end of that so yeah here we go yeah unfortunate for them obviously but it's okay fortunate for us as we have yet another exciting game of pokemon unite to be casting over lapras first pick following a blissey ban from the side of ucss3 so a, a really interesting strategy which of course gives over the inteleon to the side of god squad it does but most importantly ucs season three uh tb kratos which is jl of course <laughs> well they're in the mix somewhere um locking up hoopa real quick and i think we're about gonna find out how good that pokemon can actually be i don't know if i've okay i've casted a lot of the all kratos all the time team i don't know if i've ever casted them when it's a full five of kratos's so pretty exciting there uh shout out to Zugrug for being the newest addition uh going with oma so shout out to omo obsidian <laughs> grabbing their clan tag and heading into the thea sky ruins i'm into it also a, a sylveon pikachu pick pikachu by the way dupes nice i don't know if you've seen any recent tournaments where this pokemon's been played it is low-key broken pikachu is nuts right now it is very good, and I'm excited that UCS Season 3 is leading into it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, though, getting a Gutter Blastoise is not a bad look. You can actually see it cursed item there as well to really just kind of get in the get in the action. I mean, it's going to get that special... Oh, switched, of course, as the player switched. Throw me off a bridge. Here we go. <laughs> Five Kratos is on one side. God Squad with the last six second switch-ups. Just taking L's left and right on my own tournament zoinks. <laughs> Help me. I will. Look at God Squad's draft. We have a Zacian, Urshifu, and Teleon. All three incredible meta-defining threats on one side. UCS Season 3 going all in on this double defender strategy with full Hooper resets in terms of their healing. So they are going to be looking desperately for that entire HP bar regeneration. Obviously, Kuzi is going to be running the anti-heal on the Inteleon. So much extra damage. And I do need to remind anyone, if you're not paying attention to chat, you need to be. Because currently, if you want another giveaway, Psyche is demanding that we all come up with new Dube Snacks names. And so far, easily done is said Dubert, and I think that is hysterical. It is a name that is in <laughs> chat so right funny. now. Kratos, shout out to that one. Uh, that's like D, like like snacks. Kratos, whatever. Um, okay, I'm taking a look here. I I really want to see this Blastoise. Obviously, it's kind of playing the defender loadout, mm -hmm. so I'm hoping it goes surf for the big pushes to try and clear the trash off of these Hoopa reset portals, so that UCS season three cannot take advantage of those. Yeah, uh, that's what you got to be looking for as soon as possible. And stopping those Hoopa reset portals not the easiest thing. Surf one of your better options. Urshifu's boosted auto attack I think also has a slight knock up. So if Bora can really time those picture perfect, that's another other option but neither of which are easy to pull off no not at all and you can already see jl trying to live on the opposite side of the map shades of their uh sable eye that we saw from cse game one and of course from <laughs> the astonished stun poach and Unreal. then out like a thief in the night to meet up with the two players in the top path pro plays out of jl yep impressive also sorry chad just up the quality back up the sorry for the 720 my god <gasps> zealots you get a whole lot of damage there by the way thank goodness the comfy showed up in the little <laughs> wee hours of the night that zashin taking a ton of hyper voice damage as kratos is ready to throw some more hands no way jl gets away from that <laughs> and the zashin pressure back the other way ko'd instantly hyper voice is fine two targets because it's always a bogo deal when a comfy's riding on somebody you ko the main target and then kofi comes for free now we have a poor little cub food trying to do its best as god squad <laughs> is scrambling right now zashin back in the lane 
<laughs> yeah, Zashin back in the lane and still a Kubfu on poor Bora Reach. So God Squad desperately searching after what I might, or what I think the press has called the most important level five in the game. Uh, finally succeeding and achieving that Pokemon. And well, thanks to the Konfei being on there, I have to identify it from its weird run. Yes, it is a Blue Shifu. It is a blue Shifu indeed as it's trudging along. <laughs> Looks like JL is going to fake retreat, actual retreat. Are they going to roar back through the portal? Sometimes they do. Meanwhile, on the bottom path, this Drizzile trying to get on line. Level mm -hmm. 5, ticking over to level 6. It's very close. And that's a good sign. You want to get Inteleon up and running. Pikachu keeping pace, though. Six on six in the bottom path. Not in terms of number, but in terms of level. Bora caught in that mean look when Hyper Force starts oh. shredding away the special defense. That gets real concerning. <laughs> Zogro barely makes it through the portal before Bora Reach has to get out of dodge yet again. But that allows Zella to get in pole position for the experience. Shut down again, though, by this Zogro player. I mean, Zugrug's cruising out there, but Drizzle pulling up, getting a KO themselves. Not a bad look as they peel up top. They're trying to get some points and Lapras going for the cover there. 30 seconds till the basement Reggie hits the map. We've got three players from UCS Season 3 there as JL actually flips to the top path to try and support and see what they got going on up there. Kratos on Kratos action here. <laughs> and they're just taking a look at Zealot using that Zashin, but trying to space and get all the experience for themselves. I'm pretty sure this is Machisel. I think that's what my scouting reports have said. And well, Machisel just hitting level eight, getting a full level lead onto Zelos, playing the Zacian in the top path. And Lapras is a pretty fantastic Pokemon at getting the knockouts when they are unsupported in those scenarios. No healing options means that any poke damage just means you're way bigger of a threat for that Parish Song later. Nice spacing here by uh, Kusti. They're going to go through and they're going to secure the Registeel. I mean, Snipeshot doesn't have any pierce, so they lined that thing up true and got the target despite all the traffic up front. The Blue Shifu engagement goes through. They try to get the spacing from JL with the Phantom Force pop, but they don't quite get it. Now, the Zashin actually secures the objective for God Squad too, so they get both objectives here. They're down on the score, but these objectives are going to help them rally back into this. Both objectives and a pretty fantastic KO there for the Urshifu, but you got to give the credit to the Grass Knot. I feel like where it's actually due, and a huge execute coming up from Zelot. KO streak at two as the Regilecki has found its home, and Bora Reach, Konve, and the Kuzi have all showed up to try to get some extra value. They do not have a score lead, but a goal zone break in the top is still a decent amount of information stolen away from the side of UCS S3. I think the snipe shot just came through and took that buff as well. Uh, no, it quite didn't. But the snipe shot looked <laughs> really good there. Um, so we're seeing a, an opportunity here for the snipe shot to really ring true. You know, we were talking about before with snipe shot specifically. And you said, I believe that it's it's broken. I think it's how you describe it. It's the best best move in the game. I think you said. I think it's Grief Star, um, <laughs> but here's the here's the reason why, because I just don't think we've hit a skill threshold for it to be good, and that's kind of what we talked about on Overdunk. Check it out. Yeah. With Toon, who I'm pretty sure is in this game, but you can never tell by screen name. Anyway, here we go. Bora Reach trying to 2v4 in this scenario. The Pikachu Unite move proving to be a pretty formidable threat that they have to deal with. That Thunder affects so much damage, and the stun is too much for them to deal with. Poor Yeti is dropped off of their carry, and now they are just trying to defend this goal zone with some auto attacks. Silent Red shows up, but no Hydro Typhoon, because there is no Blast Toy Evo for them to use quite yet. They try to poach one of the Kratoses to the back side of the map, but that goal zone's gone, so Lapras has an easy way out here. Now, UCS Season 3 peeling back, but they're going to get, like you said, you've used this expression, the pole position for this basement Reggie here. Mm. Not a real fight that God Squad can take in this position. Can I um, tell you the honest truth, Deuce Snacks? Yeah. I don't know where pole position comes from. I know it's from a sport. I oh. There you go. Pokemon Unite! Oh. Zealot runs towards the top path, looking to forward the Reggie Alecki as the <laughs> KO happens out of the Lapras. Machisel's out! What a game! Horses! What a game! Five Kratos is <laughs> on one team! Zoinks! Why do we let it happen? Uh, but that's an easy secure there for the Reggie Alecki by God Squad. UCS not even looking to contend that. Uh, JL and Zug going to hold down that exterior uh, goal zone for themselves. So God Squad's going to try and go do some work at it, mm -hmm. it looks like. I like this aggressive approach for them. Obviously, you're falling quite far behind in terms of score. Chasing down that Reggie Alecki would be nice in that regard, but a split push is pretty solid as well. Called out, though, by JL. Hoops on Brown brings the squad for the defense, and Bora Reach is absolutely demolished in that team fight. 
Yep, the fists have come out. They try to split JL off from using <laughs> that big fist stun, but I mean, the KOs are raining in anyways. Three players down. Zashin's having the trouble of it up top with one of the Kratoses again, and now they're sieging the skull zone. Snipeshot's trying to rain through. Kuzi trying to put the pressure on, but that Pikachu's there to cut them off. Ash's favorite Pokemon getting it done in tandem with the mythical one, and now they're just raining in chaos all over the place. That mean look is just so devastating. I mean, <laughs> Slow Smoke and Grass Knot both landed for Yeti. They made as much space as they have been allowed to by the video game of Pokemon Unite. And Mean Look spat in that comb face face. Unbelievable. So devastating to watch a Blastoise run up against an invisible wall. But that's Pokemon Unite, and that's an incredible play so far from Zugrug in today's match. Yeah, this is a unique team composition they've put together, but it's really working out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they have a great fulcrum for this plan, right? To pivot between the defenders and kind of those squishier backline attackers. And that's the Hoopa that's facilitating their movements. Yeah. Those reset portals on those chunky frontliners. You know, when you're looking at your Zugrug playing very far forward with Umbreon and, of course, the Lapras as well. I mean, it just looks like Machizel, I think, is who we said was on Lapras. Whatever. Kratos Allegedly. On the Lapras. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. I have no. No evidence one way or the other. Uh, seems like UCS S3 has chosen the Registeel. Pretty nice to enter into this final team fight with an attack buff, but God Squad is going to be having an extra member on their team. They're actually lucky going to be doing its little bouncy jaunt towards that tier number two, but a quick portal up to that tier two is going to make the defense stalwart for the side of UCS S3. Yeah, God Squad sort of should have sandbagged that a little bit before sending it down path, making UCS Season 3 really have a tough decision on where they're going. Zashin's getting cut off right and put in the mean look, and JL and Zugrog are going to work here, and they're ripping through this HP. The portal is out, and now they're pushing pressure all over God Squad. God Squad pivots into the middle. This Rayquaza is taking to a Confi Unite is out. Lapras comes in with the Express, throws the wave on top. Pikachu Unite eats the Urshifu. Hydro Typhoon's a way late. It is way late, Zoinks. It has no <laughs> shot. JL stunning fists down, but it's Kratos on the peak. Pikachu variety, getting tons of KOs, and Machizel, I guess, securing as the Lapras. Yeah, and just shout out to Machizel and the Lapras, though, as well. I mean, I believe that is probably side effect damage if it's knocking at the Rayquaza. However, their Unite move, the Lapras Express, was perfectly placed and was able to knock up and stun Koozie's Inteleon. So they took that number one threat of the Secure with the B button of Inteleon, found that target, isolated them, and a great little stun. So the double defender play between uh, this top path player and the bottom path player, I think has been exceptional so far. And look at this. They've already got the fun little Unite move back. Yeah, P Santa Pikachu looking to deliver some gifts in the way of a beatdown <laughs> here as they crash land right in front of the rest of the God Squad, putting in tons of damage, of course. Hyper Voice is out. The portals are there to reset, but the points are what matter here, Zoinks, because that's what they're putting in. We're trying to stun them down, and look at this. UCS Season 3 feeling real comfortable babysitting this goal zone in the face of God Squad here as they're going to get themselves another KO. We're in garbage time, Zoinks. We're in garbage time. We're in garbage time, so let me please call out our chat. Shout out to Sneaky Seal, who's like, will someone please tell me who they really are? Yeah, I, I would also like to know. Also, Sneaky, if you don't know, there's no chance I'm going to know. So that's sort of the position that we're all in. But yeah, Cloudbuster saying that the ASU tag one is the real Kratos so uh, some among us for sure all right TB is JL we already knew that Toon is LG Zug is Omo Machizel is GT and Kratos is ASU well fantastic everybody make sure to refer to Big Uzi's use in Twitch chat to know what players are what <laughs> the fact that like we might have to consider making uh, a command so people understand the team that's playing is really not a place I thought we would be. UCS <laughs> Season 3 taking a big time game one. And when you look at that list of Kratoses and who is actually behind those accounts, it's no real surprise. You've got some absolute ballers on that team <laughs> to be fair someone called it out in chat early on they're like wow i feel bad for god squad's comms kratos is on top which one <laughs> you know i do think that's pretty funny <laughs> you're not gonna be able to communicate on who to isolate how many kratos have arrived that kind of variety It'd be tough to spot tough to spot out sylveon was 60k pikachu was 61k top damage in the lobby i'm telling you it's broken pretty solid showing from them god squad though gonna have the choice of first or second draft pick in our game number two well i was i really liked how um 
the Kratos is UCSC since three. And of course they have like this cartoonishly long name too. Uh-huh. Uh, team name. Uh, yeah. Season three. I like their composition cause it was unique. It's something we don't get to see too often. It worked really, really well there. And I think what was important is they weren't taking fights that they couldn't actually execute their plan on, mm-hmm. which always left them fighting on their own terms, which is yeah. great. You know, when you're looking down an Urshifu, a Zacian, you know, these high octane picks that people really see have big pop off potential. And across the way, you're like, Umbreon, Lapras is good, uh, but is it like a hyper carry, maybe Pikachu? Like it's an awkward lineup in its individuals, but when you cohesively put it together and fight the way that team was supposed to fight, it looked pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Also, I I, I have done a um, I've done a poor job of explaining this to the players. <laughs> I messaged Zell and said first or second pick, and he said, This is the second game. <laughs> I went mm-hmm okay so so far so far we're killing it we might just have to run it we'll see we'll see but <laughs> yeah i think that's a really good draft description uh do snacks i think that is the spot that they were in in a lot of those team fights and well if they can change it up that'd be good do snacks, i'm curious what you think of uh the fact that zashin is currently at a 100 percent pick rate zero percent win rate in all of our matches so far tonight where it needs to be <laughs> so it needs to be a pokemon like that needs to be beatable right yeah you know zashin can definitely take over a game it can certainly win the early parts of the game but just to like a palate cleanser for all the big unite fans out there that have fought through the the zashian winter that we did when it was released <laughs> you like to see a zashian picked every game and lose every game yeah feels great feels great i'm here for mm-hmm. it yeah I, it's just a little bit of a vendetta I had, a little bit of satisfaction now that it's finally happening. I suppose that is that is something that I can be excited for. Um, hopefully more Pokemon can receive said treatment. I think we're all in agreement there. <laughs> I just saw in chat. It was the Zacian Winter. It's the Mewtwo Ice Age. Ah, yes. It's been a rough one, folks. It's been a rough one. All right, Guad Squad, squad, uh, you know, Honda Accord. Uh, God Squad is going to be on your left side, taking first draft pick this time around, giving second over to UCS as three winners. Well, Boozy, you should have been here on time. You would have seen the grand picked, my friend. Here we go. (laughs) UCS season three. Boozle coming through Big Uzi. Ping me when someone pulls out the grand. (laughs) Missed it, Chief. (laughs) <laughs> yeah and it wasn't even trainer which is even crazier <laughs> it was eat fan, and it looked so. great yeah. like a ko streak a four right at the end yeah it's amazing all right we're locking in some picks here <laughs> let's see let's see let's see where uh where god squad's gonna go and yeah. you, not a bad choice off the hop zoinks choice, of course yeah. lapras and slow bro both denied from this game mm-hmm. it's easy for no Zuck to log ban. in umbreon yeah no blissy ban so i mean mm-hmm. that thing's open I'd be remiss if nobody picked it when they had the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people voting uh Blissey very high, but oh that last minute changeover to the Zasha. Don't bait me with the Gengar, folks, unfortunate. But Zasha and Umbreon gonna be selected on one side. I really like those preemptive Umbreon picks, but God Squad is gonna pick the Blissey into Umbreon. Bold choice, but of course the Pokemon's value goes beyond just its Unite move. You have to try to pick Pokemon that won't be too susceptible to Unite move. What can play at distance? What can cleanse it if you have that option? And then of course, uh what will not just get absolutely deleted if you get caught up by one of Zugrug's mean looks. Well, Machisel's Machamp has been selected <laughs> to be headed into the top path. I think this might be um, broadcasting a Zacian jungle to start this match. Or start this well, I'm taking a look here. UCS Season 3 went from like, I'll say goofy picks, but kind of a unique strategy angle. Uh, so Chandelure, but can't play Overheat. Let's clarify that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, hopefully they remember uh <laughs> i'll make sure i'll make sure yeah but honestly chad is right kratos having some amazing draft picks big big all of the kratos have all of their pocket picks blah blah, blah. i'm tired of these jokes anyway uh <laughs> game this number truly two sucks this very truly soon. sucks having it be like the third <laughs> event in like nine days this is <laughs> no miserable. one else has the plight that we do i think is uh is something that we do need to keep in the back of our minds specifically but yeah sure. it's going to be a flamethrower chandelure um unless they don't but hopefully they do we'll have to see what happens 
Um, but here we go. Five seconds until we head into our game number two. Gosquan having to play off the back foot, but they have picked the Trevenant, which you have kind of came down on teams who leave this Pokemon available when you think they need that defender in slot. And, well, God Squad is going to be the first ones to try it out tonight in Season 4, Week 1. Well, they're going to have to buy spacing from this Machamp and Zacian in some fashion, and at least Trevin has the opportunity to do so for this team. Uh, egg Bombs get a little bit of separation as well, uh, but it's really going to have to be Silent Red that goes banana lands if they're <laughs> going to be able to leverage a pick like Leafy on, uh, because Zacian and Machamp can just close that gap so quickly. And, yeah, I mean, you know, God Squad forbid that... that uh, <laughs> Zugrug traps that Leafeon in a mean look. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you trap a Leafeon, I mean, it's as good as a one-hit KO. <laughs> that move is is basically serving that exact role, but Gosquan can do their best and not get caught up in that, and of course, find those KOs before that even becomes an option. Chandelure and Hoopa are both targets that you can shut down if they provide themselves to that one, so if JL gets caught out, if um, if our, even just a Machop gets caught out, that could be a concern. A Selkor going to be that main target, but unfortunately for Gosquan, it's going to be the target of both teams as JL starts moving towards that blue buff. Great sense on JL right here because they could not see what was left on that Selgor as they got pivoted up. Now they didn't secure it. However, just the move that they made was actually timing wise pretty accurate. But mm -hmm. on that, there's two KOs, two players down on the side of UCS season three. I'm not too sure which one went down first, but God Squad picking up the first two is a great look for them. Yeah. And here we go. That's Toon's flamethrower move. So they, <laughs> great, no DQs. And there it is. Okay, I love flamethrower. Very few players are, I think, confident in themselves enough to be playing it. But they get that cooldown reset. It's basically a two-second cooldown if you're able to land that big burst damage. And the way Toon's playing it, his spacing is so far immaculate. Also, big change up, Bore Reach running the Dark Bear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, going to go for some objective secure, making sure they have something there, which mm -hmm. maybe uh, the Inteleon goes to liquidation here, you know, trying to take advantage of the Pokemon. They're trying to play a little bit more far forward, close that gap by reeling in a ton of damage. Drizzile, though, trying to dive on top of uh, Toon, actually gets smothered by Zugrug. Tons of damage getting rained in. That mean look trapped. Poor, poor Koozie there. Boar Reach coming in with a little bit of support. But, I mean, the damage has been done. Yeah, I think that KO looked a whole lot easier when Zugrug was not evolved, when there was still that Eevee, but that last Swablu hit of evolving the Eevee into the Umbreon made that much more of a challenging task, and, well, Kuzi unfortunately not able to close that one out. Boar Reach, though, will win the 1v1 versus Zugrug in their own central area, and just really going to prove that UCS S3 is making God Squad earn every last bit of experience. Absolutely nothing given for free. No, that's a great point, too. And UCS Season 3 is doing a good job of not only stressing the ability for Godswa to get experience, they're stressing their KO meters as they're getting knocked out real quick. UCS Season 3 getting tons of those right now. But also what they're doing is when they're seeing failed attempts, what they're doing is they're leeching time off the clock. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, Bora Reach got that 1v1 versus Zug, but they wasted like 30 seconds on that effort. Yeah, I, I think the big breakdown here now, all that time's been wasted, like you were saying, is what Pokemon actually hit those big breakpoints. And well, we have two level eights, and there it is, Toon Slim of gets that level nine on the Chandelure. So that Unite move is available for them. Registeel already at about half HP and a mean look, trapping the Trevenant, but not the Chandelure. And the Urshifu's gonna take it away. Take it away, blinked out, gonna blink black through, and I think a bunch of KOs are gonna start raining in. First player down is JL, but the pressure continues. Is Machizel actually playing back? And Zugrug trapping him up forward. The Trevenant getting stuck again and getting KO'd and split like a log real quick. Now they're looking for an opportunity on this goal zone, going for just a nice little flamethrower blast. And you said it best, Zoinks. I mean, Zug, excuse me, Toon is lining these up and making them work for them. Easy pot chopping the Italian, sorts out Zugrug. And I think UCS Season 3 needs to chill on their pad for just a <laughs> second here before things get a little too wild. Yeah, I I actually really impressed by their ability to pull back there. <laughs> Bora Reach got that KO, and I thought that was going to be a, a bout of aggression from them. But obviously, UCS S3 was waiting for that one, waiting for the trap. But good pull by God Squad to reel that one back a little bit. 
Zealot almost at nine. We have yet to see them launch this Leafy on Unite move quite yet, and that Emerald two step is absolutely devastating. Personally, one of my favorite Unite moves out of all the EV Lucians. The burst damage that it provides is just absolutely absurd. And even a Pokemon like Machamp with really high defenses will have to worry about something like that. I feel like Machizel's been Machoke for a long time. Finally took uh -huh. over to Machamp, but they were a level eight there for a very long while and wasn't really able to make the impact that we traditionally see them oh. make here. Peeling back, of course, is the Zacian, but they are in rough waters and Leafeon uses their Unite move to get the KO there. A little two-step action and they're collapsing this goal zone. Points are going back in the other way, but this fight is being taken downstairs. Two players down for God Squad. UCS still has everyone up after the respawn of the Zacian here and they are getting all of these points in and all of a sudden the lead that had shrunk is all of a sudden massive yet again yeah great little push as well take a look at the clock we just hit that five minutes so the jump pad is only now appearing at both teams home goal zones so obviously not a quick defense to be mounted for god squad towards that goal zone which means that ucss3 was able to score so rapidly in that path machamp and the zashin both with unite moves at the ready focusing on this regieleki and zealot can't really contest because they are just going to get absolutely one shot if they put themselves in that position well, Trevenant Unite has two, so they got an opportunity. Big stun in the middle, and the Trevenant is just caught in the mean look yet again. It's a great priority target for UCS Season 3. They're trying to catch some more. There's three players down. God Squad is forced to pivot and retreat. Leafeon's not there, so they can't get KO'd unless they decide to show up. Another mean look looks real mean there as the Zealot comes up, uses another two-step, gets KO on the Zacian. They're going to get KO'd back the other way. Excuse me, Machizel getting taken out by Zealot. So a nice little stem of the tides there by then, as look at the Hoopa, J peeling up top trying to make some magic happen there they're trying to score they dip out they dip ski do little solar blade action <laughs> zoinks and jl pops back through for the points nasty dude that is just sick business oh uh, you sometimes you can just hear the ankle snapping on the side of gosco when jl gets to work or reach dropping a unite move to make sure that that chandelier goes back to the goal zone for a good long time they're getting healed up at the pokemon center but so is more reach as they get that ko and they absolutely bail immediately back to the base yeti plays for a bit of information and they now have eyes on two members of ucss3 as god squad tries to pivot and earn as much exp as they can as we're only a minute and a half away from our final stretch i mean this leads a wayne gretzky here we're looking at 99 points separating these two squads ucs season three though feels like they've just got it grooving a little bit but the level between the two teams is more at parity than we've seen previously in the last seven minutes mm -hmm. absolutely leafion decides now is the time to go but too many moves the other direction they get absolutely burst and gone and so is the support at least we are still going to be respawning before that two minute mark but things are getting a little too close for comfort if i'm on the side of god squad a lot of resources expended and not a whole lot gained without a doubt they're gonna have to farm these things up they've only got about 40 seconds to do it on the other hand though ucs season three everybody has their unite move they're gonna hit this reggie like it's gonna fly in the face of god squad god squad's gonna be able to get this basement reggie preferably for free but what they're setting themselves up for is ucs to set up the fight wood hammers trying to space jl and zug Mean look comes out traps too. They lock up that objective. The portal is down to try and bring everybody through. And is this the fight where they're going to kick it off? Yeah, I mean, not very aggressive from the side of God Squad. They get that major objective. They earn a little bit of HP recovery, but they're still playing quite passive. They're just deciding to remain on their side and try to wait for the overextension the other direction. Unite move chucks up that Chandler. Ebon Fist finds the first KO of this team fight, but JL's dropped the hoops unbound. Yeah, Machizel's trying to score on the backside. That's 30, 68 points coming in, but the fight is happening. Toon being down is no big business, as now all of a sudden they have two players down. JL's trying to get some space. We've got the Machizel Unite with the reposition on the Inteleon, but they are peeled out, playing back, and they're going to make it out. Poodle Hoopa Portal comes down. JL puts the pressure on, but it's now it's Zugrug that goes down. Everybody's coming back up off the respawn. They're trying to pierce back through, but there is not enough here. Here's the question, Zoinks. God Squad has not pivoted to this Rayquaza, and they're going to need this thing because this lead is massive. And all of a sudden, UCS Season 3 has got another bite at the apple here. Yeah, they've earned a little bit of spacing, but they're fighting these KOs a little bit faster. However, Toon just sweeps in and finds a huge KO on the Kuzi. Silent Red trying to put up a little bit of a team fight as Kuzi now gets in the action. Blissey trying to stay there for that peel and support, but now Toon is starting to deal the damage and, and Zugrug locked them up in place. 
Woo, nice engagement here, and they're trying to move through. Hornleech is going to get the space again, but the Urshifu is trying to pivot back on the key targets. They are just a little bit out of reach every single time. Machizel, unfortunately, though, within arm's length, and they get gobbled up real quick. Leafeon's looking for JL. They get that KO. UCS Season 3 now is looking at Rayquaza that's getting melted off the map. Three players down, just Ashen and Zug stand here. Are they going to be able to pivot into the middle? That's what we're watching. Silent Red is up for you to get the space, and can they get it? Mean Looks might come out and trap them. No, the Hornleech is able to get the spacing on the Zacian, which means the rip continues here. Charging up the Wicked Blow, and can it land poor Reach? Looking for it. Big question is, did they no, get it? Of they course did not. not. Zogrug in the middle. Zogrug gets it. So much hesitation from the side of God Squad. Bora Reach is not comfortable with how low that HP was. Waited forever to use the Wicked Blow. Finally starts charging it up with the Solar Blade a little bit before that huge Wicked Blow. And it did not line up. I think this is UCS Season 3 holding on to this lead. Silent Red trying to slow down Machizel so they can score their 50. But as the clock ticks down, they are out of time. And UCS S3 goes up 2-0 to zero in our match. What a play, what a play. Uh, you know, top scores for all the Kratoses out there on mm -hmm. UCS Season 3. God Squad was picking great engagements, though, in those last three minutes. I really felt like they had found their way in. They really picked off Toon twice. I know for the first time we were like, oh, was that a good expenditure of resources there but the cheeky back cap by machizel going for it actually kind of hung tune out to dry because they were able to use that five on four advantage collapse on them and they took a good fight and then they took a good refight zoinks mm -hmm. and then you had the great silent red uh horn leech to get uh the zashin out of the middle and ultimately it's just zugrog squatting in the middle <laughs> literally secures it for the team in between like you said the big solar blade and the big wicked blow yeah, unreal. The, a snarl, I think, was the move that they used to secure that Rayquaza. Absolutely unbelievable. And, and people say it in chat, of course, 100% Kratos secure rate on every objective. That is true. <laughs> Kratos really popping off. Maybe we've been looking at this problem all wrong. Maybe we could look like God to your casters when we just call out the correct player making the correct play every single time. If we just say Kratos. We'll have to think about that as we jump to a break before our grand finals, which is going to be GOAT versus UCS S3 winners. It's going to be an amazing match. You don't want to miss it. Do not go anywhere.